So good morning, good evening, everyone. Welcome back to Pageant Trend. And we are live now at the Pageant Trend Facebook page and also our YouTube channel, Pageant Trend. So good morning, everyone. And uh, we are now having our live interview with Miss Universe Canada 2020, Nova Stevens at Pageant Trend. So um, I know, guys, you're, ex you're so excited to meet our guests for this day and uh, without further ado guys please help me welcome our guests for this morning miss universe canada 2020 nova stevens good morning mabuhai hi Hello, dear <laughs> did i say that right is it mabuhai yes. is that you said okay hi oh, yeah. <laughs> you're correct <laughs> so how uh First, please greet our viewers. Yes. Mabuhai, Philippines. Thank you so much for all the love and support that you've been giving me. It really means a lot. I, I was saying to um, Jay earlier that I just I just adore the Philippines. You guys are always so happy, full of life, and I've never met an unhappy Filipino. So what is your secret to happiness? Because you're always happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as being, um, despite of having our, um, our circumstances of course we still manage to, to be happy it's our nature of it's course it's your nature and i really admire yeah. that about about you guys yeah we always smile with with the strange people um because okay. in, in nature we are also hospitable very hospitable yeah. and so i think a lot of people learn from the philippines filipinos in general because you just always exude love and i said it time and time again but love is truly the answer. Love is free. It doesn't cost you anything to give love to someone. So be like Filipinos and just give love. Yeah, you're correct. Yeah. So what have you been doing uh, this pandemic? What have I been doing? Lots of interviews. I've been doing a lot of interviews talking about the fact that I'm the second woman in the history of Miss Universe Canada to win the title of Miss Universe Canada as a black woman, sorry, the second black woman. And the last woman that was black that has won was 31 years ago. So that has been a lot of um, the interviews have been regarding that topic. And also Black Lives Matter, just racism as a whole. Unfortunately, it's still very prevalent in 2020. And it breaks my heart that race is still a topic of conversation. It shouldn't have to be, but it is. Yeah. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. All right. So yeah. is this your first pageant that you have joined? No, this was my third time competing for Miss Universe Canada. The first wow. time I competed, I only made top 12. The second time, I only made top 20. And then this time, I came in like a wrecking ball, and, and I won. So there was a lot of hard work that I put into this. This title was not just handed to me. I've earned it. Wow, that's that's great. Maybe this is, this is your time to shine, my dear. This is my time to shine, yeah. <laughs> By the way, to our viewers, you can... You can, if you have questions, you can write it down at the comment sections, and it will be uh, the guest. Our guest for today will be uh, answering or entertaining some questions. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, can you tell tell us more about your uh, self? Well, um, I'm Nova Stevens. I'm originally from South Sudan, so my origins are Sudanese. I've been living in Canada for the past 22 years. I immigrated to Canada at the age of six with my cousin leaving my immediate family back in Africa. It's actually been 22 years since I've seen them. So I'm really hoping that this year, this title can help me reunite with my family. I could build a home for them, get my mother out of the UN camp and finally see them. So that's pretty much me in a, a little bit. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Can you tell us uh, more about your pageant's journey? Well, as I mentioned, this was my third time competing at Miss Universe Canada. The first time I competed, I had long hair. You know, I really wanted to comply to society's standards of beauty, which was someone who has Eurocentric features. So I had the long hair, I had the weave. 
the second time I competed, I said to myself, Nova, if you're going to compete and represent yourself and essentially women of color, it's important that you represent yourself authentically. Although long hair is beautiful, but so is my natural hair. So it was very important for me to represent myself as the way God made me. And that was, that is with natural hair, no weave, no wigs, just Nova, as you see right now. <laughs> wow, that's, that's great to hear that from you. So why did you decide to cut your hair? Um, well, I used to relax my hair. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if you know what relaxer means, but relaxer is essentially chemically straightening your hair to make it straight. Again, I wanted, I thought that having straight hair was deemed more beautiful because society told me that in order to be beautiful, you had to have your, your center features. You had to have straighter hair because curly hair wasn't beautiful. So growing up, I often had weaves. I relaxed my hair, but then I realized not only was it damaging to my hair, but also to my soul because that wasn't authentic to me. My hair started falling off because it became very damaged and I just cut it because it was damaged. And then after I cut it, I felt so liberated. And I finally saw my, for myself for the first time. I saw myself because for the longest time I felt I was hiding myself behind all those weaves and wigs. But when I saw myself, I made it a pact to myself that I had to continue to always be myself no matter what. Whether or not people think I'm beautiful, that's up to them, but it's important that I find myself beautiful naturally. So that's why I cut my hair short. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much for sharing your experience. Of course. Of uh, course. Okay, so let's have first our um, greetings from, the, from our viewers. <laughs> All right, so, so watching. Tori, uh, Tori okay. and also we have Cameron Grell. Hello. Hi, Mabu. Hi. <laughs> and also Justin Ray de la Camara. Oh, thank you, Justin. Thank you so much. So she said, he said that, "Hello, Miss Canada. You yeah. you are so stunning and beautiful." Oh, that's so sweet. How do you say thank you when um in Filipino? No, and what is the oh my god? Oh, yeah, no, it's maraming salamat. Marami, how do you say it? Maraming salamat. Maraming, maraming salamat. Maraming salamat. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's correct. Okay, so we have another words. Uh, yeah. Hannah de la Cruz. Hello there from. Hi, Hannah. Nice to meet you. <laughs> and also we have from Justin, again, Justin Ray de la Camara. Black is beautiful. Thank you, Justin. I appreciate that. And all colors are beautiful. All colors are yeah. beautiful. Yeah, correct. So we have viewers from our YouTube channel. So... Hi, Miss Canada, looking gorgeous. How does it feel holding the title? It feels amazing, but I also feel that I have a huge responsibility. You know, not only am I representing Canada, but I'm also representing people of color that I've been that have been told they're not good enough, that have been worthy of representing a nation that is so diverse. So I feel that I have to continue to create awareness and use my platform to advocate for change, but it feels amazing. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. We have another viewers from our Facebook account. So we have from Haider Gallardo Ortiz. Hola, saludos desde Colombia. Hola, como estas? <laughs> so we have another also viewers watching Ronald Flores Senial. Hi, Miss Canada. Good day. Let me ask, what makes you beautiful? Thank you. What makes me beautiful is the fact that I can appreciate how different I look. I think we're all different in our, in our own right. One of my favorite quotes is by Confucius, and it says that 
everything has beauty, but not everyone sees it. As long as you see beauty in yourself, that's all that matters because not everyone is going to see you as beautiful, but it's very important that you see yourself as beautiful. I think my heart and the fact that I always just want to share love is what truly makes me beautiful because the exterior that can fade and you can, you can alter how you look, but if your heart is not beautiful, then I think that takes away from the outer beauty. So for me, it's, it's my heart. All right. Thank you so much. We have viewers also from our YouTube channel. What are you? Thank you for watching Sean Dalman. What are your stands on coronavirus? Thank you. I think that right now we are experiencing an unfortunate time. COVID-19 has proven to be a teacher of many things. Although there are lots of negatives, I also want to look at the positives that we have learned through COVID-19. I've learned through COVID-19 that we are social creatures and without interactions, we cannot thrive. I miss the simple things like coffee dates, you know, a simple hug from a friend. So it's important for us to recognize the things that we took for granted before COVID. So right now I know we're unable to gather, but just take into account the fact that you're able to take time for yourself and connect with your friends and families that you haven't been able to for a long time because of busy schedules. You're able to work from home. So I've learned that COVID-19, although it has driven us apart, it also has brought us together. Oh, that's great. Thank you for sharing. So we have another question from our viewers. What do you think is the hardest From Arabella Sham Shapenko. Question for Miss Canada. What do you think is the hardest part of being Miss Canada 2020? I think the hardest part about being Miss Universe Canada 2020 is are the racist comments that I've been getting regarding the color of my skin. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult not to you know feel the hurt and i'm trying my best not to let them let them validate me but i have to think about the young girls who look like me that are going to go to my profile and read these comments and see themselves through those comments that's the hardest part for me is see these people attack me because of the color of my skin something that i physically cannot change that's the hardest part i would say all right thank you so much so shout out for maris kaayon hello Hi, Maurice. And also, we have Briggs Bralsanio Batung Batumbakal. Hi, Miss oh, Canada. Hi. Oh, oh, hi. <laughs> and also, we have watching Flora Bell Arafol Trangia. Hi, Lob from Philippines. Hi, Philippines. How are you? Mabu hi. <laughs> And our uh, YouTube viewers from Sean Galman. Hello, Miss Canada. Thank you for raising short hairs in Miss. Oh, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. And also watching Alisa Fake Kabangai. Kabang you're so pretty. You have a genuine, genuine smile. Thank you, Alyssa. Thank you so much. Oh, we have a question from our viewers. So from Tanya Dane Landritz. Hello, Miss Canada. What is the greatest social movement to your generation? I think the greatest social movement right now for me personally would be the Black Lives Matter. Um, as you've read and heard, many Black lives have been lost in police brutality as well as hate crimes, which is why I've been a huge advocate of Black Lives Matter. Because when we say Black Lives Matter, we're not stating that all lives don't matter. Of course they do. But unfortunately, until Black Lives Matter, all lives cannot matter. It's important that not only Black people advocate for the, for the change of racial equality, it has to be all of us. We have to collectively join this movement and fight for change because ultimately change begins with us. And as I said before, love, love is, hate is taught, sorry. So teach, to, teach your children to love at a very young age and just always express love. All right, thank you so much. So before we move on for another questions from our viewers, so let's have our questions prepared from you. So are you excited? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, excited. Better. okay. So let's start with our first question. Okay, this question is, uh, I know you're familiar because it's 
it's been always trending once uh the Miss Universe is um your dog yeah. is not happy <laughs> from Miss Universe. Okay. So let's have uh, our first question. Okay. This one. What is the most important lesson you've learned in your life and how would you apply it to your time as Miss Universe? This question is from Miss Universe 2018, Catrione Gray. Hmm. The most important lesson that I've learned in my life is that not everyone is going to see you as beautiful. Not everyone is going to accept you. And that is okay. Do not seek validation from others. Find your truth and learn to love yourself because ultimately, as long as you love yourself, that's all that matters. And as long as you just spread love, then everything else will, will just make sense. <laughs> it will just make sense. Um, yeah, I think that's, yeah, okay. just, not everyone's gonna love you. All right, thank you so much. So is Miss Canada still single? <laughs> she doesn't kiss her tail. Perfect. Okay, so it, this question is, it was like this. So would you change your religious belief to marry the person you love? This question is from Miss Universe 2011. I think the person who loves me would accept me just as I am. So because they love me, they wouldn't require me to change myself. So for that reason, I wouldn't because I would trust that the love of my life would accept me as I am. All right. Thank you so much for sharing. So next question. Which have it easier in life, men or women? This question is from Miss Universe 2018. Because I'm a woman, I can only speak on behalf of women. I can't say that men have it easier or harder because, again, I'm not a man. But women, we definitely have had a difficult time. It wasn't long ago that we were able to vote. You know, it's we're now starting to make as much as men. So I definitely know that there are struggles in being a woman, but also being a woman and woman of color. So for that reason, I would say at times we have a more difficult time. All right, thank you so much. So next question. Mm -hmm. All right. What is the essence of being a woman from Miss Universe 1994? The essence of being a woman, I would say, is our nurturing nature. We naturally just care and we just exude love. I wish the world thought like women more often. I wish men were more nurturing because if that was the case, maybe perhaps we would not have as many wars in this world. I think that is the true essence of a woman, our nurturing nature. All right. Thank you so much. Next question. According to the World Health Organization, there is urgent need for HIV testing across the globe. Do you believe that HIV testing should be made mandatory? This question is from Miss Universe 2009. So do I believe that HIV testing should be made mandatory? You know, it, it's it's really hard to say if it's for, you know, the betterment of our nation, then sure. But if if the person is not exhibiting signs of HIV, then I think it's ultimately up to them. It shouldn't be mandatory. It should be up to the person as we have. we It's our basic human rights. It, it's up to us to decide whether or not we want to have a vaccine. Scene, but it shouldn't be something that was forced upon us. All right. Thank you so much for sharing. So next question. Do you think uh, speaking English should be a prerequisite? Why or why not? From Miss Universe 2012 question. I don't think speaking English should be a prerequisite. English can be taught. It can be learned. So as long as the delegate is open to learning, I think that's all the requirement they need. 
people who speak more languages are actually a lot more intelligent than people that just speak one language. So as long as you're able to learn it, then that's fine. But you don't have to already be speaking in English fluently because the world does not speak English and it's not fair just to have English speaking people. All right, thank you for sharing. So next, in many part of world obstacles still exist that impede women from achieving their goals in some corporations. What can women do to overcome this? Questions from Miss Universe 2009. Melinda Gates, uh, once, Melinda Gates once said that a woman with a voice is by definition a strong woman. I think it's important for women to continue to use their voices, take up space, and advocate for the changes that we want to make. Don't ever stop trying. Whatever goal you're told that you can't achieve, prove them wrong because you can do it. All right. Thank you so much. Next, if you could be a fictional film or literary character, would you be, who would you be and why? Miss Universe 1994 question. I would be a supernova. I think it's only fitting. <laughs> My name is Nova. So I would be a supernova and I would just go out there and save the world by spreading love. That would be my fictional character. Wow. Sweet. <laughs> Next. What quality in yourself are you most proud of and how will you apply that quality to your time as Miss Universe? From questions from Miss Universe 2017. The qualities that I embody are that of strength. As you've read my story, I've overcome many obstacles in my life. I'm also very confident. I think it's important as a miss to be confident in not only who you are, but your message to the world. And lastly, kindness. I really do think that love is the answer to all the pain that's going on around the world. Those are the three characteristics that I embody and that I would hope to see not only in myself, but in a future Miss Universe as well. All right. Thank you so much for sharing. So next question. If there were no rules in your life for one day, and you could be outrageous, what would you do? This question is from Miss Universe 1997. If there were rules in my life for one day and I could be outrageous, what would I do? I'm not a, I'm a very confident person, so I feel that I already do things that I want. I believe in not having what ifs in your life. So whatever crazy idea I have, I do it. If I fail, that's okay. I exceed, that's great. So I would probably, oh, that's a hard one. What would I do? I would get on a plane without my passport <laughs> and maybe sit in first class. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, I feel like I'm, I, I go by the book, so it's very hard to say something outrageous. <laughs> All right. Thank you for sharing. So let's move on to our next question. There you go. What is the most important thing we should teach young girls today? This question asked uh, from Susie Bini, our, Miss, our reigning Miss Universe 2019. The most important thing we should teach young girls today is to love themselves. Society and social media have a way of showing a narrative of what is considered beautiful. If we can teach our girls at a very young age to see themselves as beautiful, then they wouldn't have to seek outside for validation or listen to the media to tell them they're beautiful because they will they will already feel that. All right, thank you. So let's move on to our next question. <laughs> there you go. Name something over the course of your life that you failed at and tell us what you have learned from that experience? This question is from Miss Universe 2016. I can tell you that I failed at many things in my life. As I said, this was the third time that I competed for Miss Universe Canada, which means I failed the other two times. What I've learned is perseverance and faith in yourself are the key ingredients to success. As long as you believe in yourself and as long as you don't give up, you can achieve anything imaginable. So don't ever give up. All right. Thank you for sharing. So we have our next question. 
if Miss Universe would have become pregnant during her reign, should she should she be allowed to continue as Miss Universe? Miss, this question is from Miss Universe 1999. If Miss Universe, if Miss Universe uh, were to become pregnant during her reign, being a Miss Universe is a huge responsibility with a schedule that is quite unpredictable. And being pregnant is also a huge responsibility because they're both very difficult tasks. I would say she shouldn't just because being a mother is such hard work and being Miss Universe is, is hard as well. It'd be very hard to, to be able to do those two together. So for that reason and that reason alone, I would say she shouldn't be able to do so she can focus on being a mother and raising her child. All right, thank you so much. So we have our last question. <laughs> All right. Why should you be the next Miss Universe? This question asked from Miss P Awards back, Miss Universe 2015. Mm -hmm. I should be the next Miss Universe because I believe that I have the voice to invoke change. Your voice is the most powerful tool that you possess. And I wanna use my voice to invoke change. I don't wanna win because I'm just a beautiful woman. I wanna win because there's more to me. And I believe my power is my voice. So I wanna use my power to really be a pioneer for change. That is why I should win. Awesome. Thank you so much. So let's move on to our uh, viewers, comments and questions. <laughs> All right, so we have the comments uh, watching Lilo D. OMG Nova Stevens. Aww. I super love her. She's one of my bet for Miss Universe. She will rock the Miss Universe stage. Thank you, Lilo. Thank you so much. So we have also watching Bruno Dal. I love her accent. She is stunningly gorgeous. We should love Miss Canada. Thank you, Bruno. I appreciate it. So we have another viewers uh, from Laika Julia Rivera Soriano. Hello, Miss Canada. Hello, Laika. <laughs> All right. So let's have from Reynaldo Jr. Pondulan Miliada. Hi, Miss Canada. What is your great advice to all people to make us united? My advice would be see color. You know, on my final night, I said that it's okay to see color because when you see color, it helps you recognize the struggles experienced by people of color. So see color and then see that there are lots of injustices experienced by people of color. And when you notice the injustices, use your voice. Use your voice to speak against those injustices and use your voice to speak for those that can't speak for themselves. And just spread love. To spread love. Yes. You should always spread love, not always hate. Spread love. Absolutely. Correct. So we have comments from Zyrix de Guzman Plaza. Do not seek validation from others. Such a powerful woman. Wow. Thank you, Zyrix. <laughs> Thank you so much. Comments also from Lilo D. Know your truth, and that's all that matters. That matters. Wow, I'm so blown away. I, I so love you, Nova Stevens. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> Watching Michelle Joy Padaihag. Wow, love. Heart. <laughs> Lots of love to all of you. Lots of love. Thank you so much. So we have questions also from Lilo D. Miss Canada, what, make, what will make you win? Miss Universe? I think I'm a powerful woman and I think a lot of people see that. I'm not afraid to challenge myself. I'm not afraid to challenge the status quo of what is considered beautiful. I'm not afraid to stand up for my beliefs. I think that that is what differentiates me from a lot of the delegates. We have voice, really not, I'm not afraid to use my voice, even if it means people are going to be against me. I'm a phenomenal, phenomenal woman, and I'm a strong woman, and I'm not afraid to fight for what is right. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is my crown. 
crown for you. Here. Yeah. All right. So we have comments also from viewers from Norman Alimor and Mata. Hi, Miss Canada. Love you. Oh, love you, Norman. Thank you so much. We have questions from our viewers from Laika Julia Rivera Soriano again. How will you encourage women to join pageants? I think my story is that of resilience. The fact that I've competed three times just shows to you that success does not come overnight. It's not a linear line. It's quite jagged and it has lots of potholes. If I can do it, I'm no different from you. I'm not special. I'm no different from you. If I can achieve my dreams, so can you. The only thing you have to do is continue pursuing and continue to believe yourself. Correct. That's what I want to do. Encourage you to chase after your wildest dreams. All right. So we have questions from Michelle. From Mich Michelle Joy Padayhag. What is the best advice you have ever been given? The best advice I've ever been given is do everything with love. When you do everything with love, I think that life rewards you. But when you do things with hate, then you only attract more hate into your life. So although I'm receiving hateful comments, I'm choosing to choose love. I'm sending love to all the people that might hate me, might think I'm ugly. I want to send them love because I think they need love more than I do, which is why they're giving me hate. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Actually, Lilo D has more uh, prepared questions for you. Okay. <laughs> so, we have another question from you. Lilo D, what are the three most challenging chapters in your life? One would definitely be coming to Canada at a very young age without my family. Um, I'm not sure if a lot of you know this about me, but I've been living in Canada for the past 22 years and I've not seen them. So that would be a second difficult chapter in my life, not having seen my family, my immediate family for the past 22 years. Another one would be feeling guilty for unable to essentially take care of them financially as much as I'd like to. Those I would say would be the most challenging chapters in my life because I, I want to take care of my family, but because I'm here by myself, it's difficult to do that and I have to take care of myself first before I can take care of others. So it's often a conflict that I have and I often feel guilty for not being there for them as much as I should. And I'm being really honest with you guys right now, but these are the thoughts that surface in my mind. I feel guilty that I'm not able to support my families as much as I'd like to, but hopefully that'll change. So God willing. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for sharing. So we have... Uh -huh. Comments from John Philip Reyes. You will be the next Miss Universe. Thank you, John. I hope so. <laughs> All right. So another question from Michelle Joy Padaiha. What bothers you most about what is happening in the world today? I think what bothers me most about what's happening in the world today is that there is such a division amongst us. We're all one race, and that is the human race. Our only difference is the color of our skin, but ultimately we're the same. I hate that people are segregated based on the color of their skin, or some people think they're more superior because they're lighter, or that's what I hate about the world right now is the fact that we're so divided. There's hate, but I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that love will prevail, but it's up to us to be the pioneers of change. And that means using your voice, advocating for change and using your voice to, again, just, just spread love. Always remember to do everything with love. Love is free. Doesn't cost you a thing. All right, thank you so much. So we have comments from our viewers by Princess Cal Calia Sabado Bangalan. Hi, Miss Canada, you're so gorgeous. Oh, thank you, Princess. I love your name. <laughs> Another comments from viewers. Oh. Harold Smith on Teho. Hi, Miss Canada. You're so gorgeous. I'm so proud of you. Thank you, Harold. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. So we have from Wage Alejandro. Any advice for LGBTQ people, Miss Canada? Absolutely. The world has told you to hide who you are. I say go out there and be exactly 
who you want to be, how God made you. If somebody is telling you that you should not be gay or you should not be transsexual, don't listen to them. They don't know you. No one knows you better than you. So go out there and be yourself unapologetically because you des- you are you deserve it. It is your right. It is your birthright to be who you are. So just be who you are, whatever that may be. All and right. I love you guys. <laughs> Thank you so much, Miss Canada. So we have from Emmanuel Garcia. Hi, Miss Canada. Please shout out my name from Tarlac. God bless. Hi, Emmanuel Garcia. Mabuhay. Oh, wait. Where is Tarlac? Where is that? Is that Philippines or no? Uh, yes, it's in the Philippines. Okay. Mabuhay. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. So we have another comments from Norman Alimoran Mata. Oh, South Africa. I love Tarlac in South Africa. Oh, and I love South Africa too. I hope that one day I can go visit South Africa for sure. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we have questions from our viewers. From Reynaldo Jr. Pondulan Miliada. Miss Canada, how is important to you the crown? How important the crown to you? This crown is more than just a crown to me. This crown is a symbol of change. The fact that it has taken 31 years for a black woman to win Miss Universe Canada just shows to me that we have so much work to do. So if I were to win Miss Universe, that just shows that we are heading in towards the right direction. I hate that people are upset that if there were to be a back to black win, how come nobody ever bats an eye when it's two Latin Latin countries that win or two European countries that win. I feel that there's a double there's a double standard when it comes to beauty pageants and just life in general when it involves black people. You shouldn't be comparing me to South Africa. We are beautiful in our own right. So stop pitting women of color together because we don't. There there should be a room for more than one black woman, not just one. Um, so yes, this crown to me is very important because it's a symbol of change. Thank you so much for sharing. So we have another question from our viewers from Cyrix de, de Guzman Plaza. How will you convince people that beauty queens and beauty pageants are not shallow and still have a great impact in our society today? I can tell you firsthand that beauty pageants are a lot more than just about beauty. If they were just about beauty alone, then all those women competing would be winners because they're all beautiful. Beauty pageants are full of women that are determined, they're entrepreneurs, they're confident, and they're powerful women. We have voices, we have stories, and we are pioneers of change. And you can see right now, all the women that I've won have been very vocal about certain causes. We were not, we don't want to we want to change the world. And that starts by with us. Every one woman that has won thus far has been tackling issues, has been using her voice, which is her power to advocate for change. I think we all know there's a trend right now and that is a powerful women that are winning beauty pageants. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. So we have another question from Michelle Joy Padayhan. Do you think pageants are still relevant today? I think they're very relevant. Pageants create a platform for these powerful women that are winning these pageants. Yeah, they're very relevant. They teach you so many skills, public speaking skills, confidence, motivation. They're very, yeah, very relevant. All right, thank you so much. So we have comments or questions from Jimboy Cervantes Solis. Hi, Miss Canada. What what are you looking forward in the Miss this Miss Universe 2020? I look forward to meeting all the amazing delegates from all over the world because it's truly a sisterhood. There's only one winner, but the only thing that we can all take away from is the experience. So it's important to me to have fun and to welcome all the delegates with open arms. So I look forward to getting to know my sisters. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. So we have comments and questions from Mega Brandy. Brandy from Bohol, Philippines. What is the difference 
uh, between the virtual pageant and the usual pageant? Oh, it's it's so difficult. Uh, for us, we didn't have an audience. We had to wear masks. So it kind of takes away from that interaction and the interactiveness of pageants. Usually when pageants are you know normal, you have to go to sponsor events, you get to dress up and wear these beautiful gowns, but we weren't able to do that because we had nowhere else to go. It's it was a very difficult time to compete, but it was also an important time to compete, and I'm glad I did it. Wow. Well, anyway, um, congratulations for winning Miss Universe Canada. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So next we have from Flora Bell Arapo. No, uh, that is a hard one. <laughs> if given a chance to be in the top two, what country do you want to share this moment with? Oh, I don't think I could answer that question because all these women are so beautiful and so powerful. I don't know how the judges are going to choose. I am so glad I'm not a judge. I honestly would be happy to hold any country's hands, whether it's Philippines, Thailand, it doesn't matter to me. I will be happy with whoever is there, but I can't choose right now because I'm not a judge, so. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. So we have a question also, again from uh, Bruno Dahl. What is your stand on a trans woman joining the Miss Universe? We've, we've had a trans woman join Miss Universe. That was last year, right? Last year? Or, yeah. Yeah. 2018. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, two years she's a ago. Woman. Yeah, she's a woman, so I have no problem with it. Again, if you feel in your heart that you are a woman, who am I to tell you otherwise? So I say go for it. All right. Thank you. Awesome. Comments from Hannah de la Cruz. Hello, can you shout out Paul from Philippines? You're so cute. Uh, hello, Paul from Philippines. You're so cute, right? <laughs> Hi, Paul. <laughs> Say maraming salamat. Maraming salamat. Yeah? Wow. Okay. Yeah. Right. So we have another question from Lilo D. Which Miss Universe queen in the past have inspired you the most? For sure. So after competing in 2018, I swore off pageants. I said I would never compete again. And people were like, no, but go back. And I said, no, I'm never competing again. It wasn't until 2019 when Sosabini won. Seeing her win fueled me. It showed me that women that look like me were appreciated and could win pageants. Because not only was she a black woman from Africa, but she was dark skinned and she had short hair. So I could relate to her. This is why representation is so important. Had I not seen her win, if I can be honest with you, I don't believe I'd be having this conversation with you today because I wouldn't have seen myself winning this pageant because it hasn't been done before with someone that looks like me. So I would say Zosie was definitely the queen that has inspired me in the past the most. All right. Thanks for sharing. So we have another question from Mega Brandy. What is important to you, your crown or your sash? Ooh, what is important to me, my crown or my sash? I think they're both important. I always tell myself that I don't need a crown or I don't need a crown to, to know that I'm a queen. And neither do you, Mega, all of you out there, you don't need a crown to show you that you were a queen. Your crown is invisible and just wear it with pride. Wear your crown with pride, your invisible crown. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. You're correct. Your crown isn't it in your head or in, it's inside your exactly. heart. Exactly. All right. So next, from Morones Arlene. Hi, Miss Canada. What makes you different from other girls competing today? Well, physically, I think I'm very different. I am a dark-skinned Black woman with African features with short, coiled hair. I think that makes me different, my physical attributes. But another thing that makes me different, different is the power that is my voice. 
I know how powerful my voice is and I know that my voice will create a lot of change and I'm not afraid to use it. Yeah. All right. So I have a personal question from you. So since you have joined uh, the Miss Universe Canada 2020 and uh, you've yeah. won, can you tell us uh, more about your advocacy? My advocacy? Yeah, for sure. I have, right now I'm in the middle of creating, I want to create a children's book where I am a fictional character by the name of Supernova. So I'm a superhero who goes and tackles the issues of race at schools. And how I tackle those issues is by, again, just spreading love, just always giving a message of love to these kids that are being bullied for the color of their skin or how they look. Another thing that I'm working on right now is registering my nonprofit, which would be, which would give education grants, sorry, education scholarships, as well as business grants for people of color to just help them navigate life better and to encourage them to be entrepreneurs. Sorry, my phone just went to 10%. Um, encourage them to be entrepreneurs and to encourage them to pursue education because I really believe that knowledge is power. The more you educate yourself, essentially the more success will come into your life and if you don't have the means for education i want to be able to help kids get to where whatever goal they want to achieve um, all right what else uh right now i'm not sure if you're all familiar with emancipation day but emancipation day was the day that slavery was abolished in canada so what i want to do is have it recognized nationally not only just in BC, which is where I live, or in Ontario, but nationally, because it's an important part of history and it's a, an important part of Canadian history. All right, thank you so much. So we have another question. Okay, from Mega Brandy again. If you were given a chance to visit the Philippines, Manila. Wow. <laughs> Why Manila? I have friends that are from there and they say it's so beautiful. So I would have a place to stay and I would know people. So that's why, but I want to visit all over the Philippines because it's just a beautiful country. Yeah. I want to do a tour in the Philippines. <gasps> Let's do that. Let's do a tour. Oh my God. <laughs> so aside from Manila, where do you want to go? Do you like beaches? I do like beaches. Where's that place that, um, I forgot what it's called, but it's, I think the Pirates of the Caribbean were filmed there. Do you remember the name? Um, I don't, I don't think so. I guess it's in Palawan. I don't remember, but it was just beautiful. Like all your beaches are beautiful. I just, I just want to visit the whole, yeah, country. Take me please, Philippines, take me, take me. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Thank you so much. So we have questions from our viewers. From Cyrix de Guzman Plaza again. How would you describe the world a blind person? That's a really good question. To a blind person, I would describe the world to be... The world is sometimes cold, but it's our hearts that warm it. Yeah. I think I would describe it and I would say that not everyone sees beauty in this world but if we look with our hearts instead of our eyes then we would see more beauty okay that's that's a really good question <laughs> thank you so much so we have comments from Christine Kali Rosales Sibayan I love you Miss Canada I want to join Miss Universe too someday. Do it. Do it. Yeah, do it. I say do it. Do you have you any advice it. to her? My advice to you is remain true to who you are because it's so easy to pretend to be some. It's actually harder to pretend to be someone else. It's easier to be yourself. So be yourself and just believe that you can do it and you will get there. Even if it takes two tries, three tries, however long it takes as long as you have faith in yourself you will get there all right thank you 
So from Mega Brandy, please visit in our place, Bohol Island. It's a nice place. Mm, I would love to. Yeah, I would love to. All right. So comments from Bruno Dahl again. It's Boracay Island, I think. That's what she asked about the yes, place. Yes, yes, like, yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Bruno. I was like, what is it called? Yes, it's so beautiful. All right. Thank you so much, Bruno. From June Real Wenceslao Lucero. Do you allow gays to join Miss Universe? Support your answer. Do you mean like transgendered or? Yeah, the gay, yeah, the transgender. Yeah, of course. Um, Canada had, I think what year was it? We had our first transgendered woman, 20, I want to say 2011. I think mm. it's 2011. Absolutely. As I said before, if you feel in your heart that you are a woman and you want, and you then you're a woman, then you are allowed, you should be allowed to join Miss Universe because you're a woman. Yeah. Thank you so much. So on our questions from Queen Flora Palintalay. Hi, Miss Canada. How can you, how did you conquer adversities and what made you strong after such? I truly believe that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I firmly believe in that. How did I conquer is again, remaining faithful, like having faith in myself that I can get there. I understand that life is not always going to be easy and it's not always your timing. It's God's timing. And I, I think I learned that more during 2018 or this year, rather based on my time, I would have wanted to win Miss Universe Canada 2018. But God's timing said 2020 was the year I was going to win. So just believe that no matter how hard life gets, eventually it'll get better. Thank you so much. From Cyrix de Guzman Plaza, if you could turn back time, what advice you will give to your eight-year-old self? Dear eight-year-old Nova, you are going to live a life full of joy, but also some pain. When you do experience pain, I want you to hold your head up high. And I want you to know that you are loved and you are guided. And there are so many people supporting you. Don't ever doubt ever that you are incapable of achieving greatness because you are greatness. You are greatness. Wow, thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> So we have comments from Junreo Wenceslao Lucero. Wow, amazing, amazing, great answer, Miss Canada. Thank you, Junreo. Here's another question from Cyrix de Guzman Plaza. What is your country's greatest contribution to the world? Our greatest contribution to the world. Do you, do you mean in terms of like inventions? Would multiculturalism be, be one or? Because yeah. I would say Canada is a very diverse nation. And I think that is a great contribution because it shows the world that we can live together harmoniously, although we're so different. We're not a homogenous country. We are a land built on immigrants and we, it's our diversity that makes us happy, uh, makes us a great nation. I think that is our greatest contribution is the fact that we accept and welcome people from all walks of life. All right. Thank you so much. Here's another question from Mega Brandy. How will you define love? I believe that love comes from within. If you love yourself and you express love to yourself, naturally you will express love to others but if you don't love yourself it's easier for you to spew hate which is why i find people who often give hateful remarks or comments it's because they're lacking love so how do i define love love is loving the self once you love yourself then you will love others so learn to love yourself correct love yourself first before love others yourself. yeah because if you yeah. love yourself, you love others. Correct. Okay, so I have a personal questions mm -hmm. from you. Yeah. So tell us more uh, 
how how did you prepare for this uh, upcoming pageant? Tell us more your your preparations. Oh man, I prepared a lot. Natalie Globova, oh. Miss Universe Canada 2005, as well as Miss Universe 2005 was my coach. So her and I have been working since I, when Zosie Beanie won. I texted her. I said, Natalie, I'm doing it. She's like, Great, let's do it. So I've had her. I've had public speaking coaches. I've had runway. I've also had a physical trainer. So that's how I've been prepping. I've had coaches for every avenue of the pageant. Tell us more about your um, weakest, the weakest uh, part of this journey. The weakest part of this journey? Yes. Like uh, from the pastorella or the... Mm. Oh, I see, I see. Like the hardest part of the journey? Yeah. Um, probably... Oh, that's so hard. I don't... I mean, I, I believe that there's always work to be done. I don't think that I'm perfect. I mean, no one is. And you should never, you know, strive to be perfect because perfection does not exist. So I will say that I want to work on everything. I want to work on everything. I want to continue working on my public speaking. I want to continue working on my q and A. I I want to continue working on my walk because you want to be prepared as much as you can and practice makes perfect. So I'm going to keep practicing in, until Miss Universe. And once I hit that Miss Universe stage, you're all going to say, whoa, supernova. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> all right. So next question. What do you like most about yourself? Huh? What do you like most about yourself? What do I like most about myself? Do you mean like physical attributes or... Uh, any aspect you like. any aspect I think what I love about myself is the fact that I'm I always want to give love even when someone you know wrongs me even when someone is unkind to me naturally I just want to give love because I know how it feels to receive hate so why would I want to give that hate back I think I really love that quality about myself yeah all right thank you Next, what do you think is the biggest problem facing young today? The biggest problem facing young people today. Young people today? I think with COVID, the biggest problem facing not only young people, but everyone as a whole would be mental health. We are social creatures, so the fact that we're unable to interact with other beings, I think it has affected a lot of us mentally. I can personally tell you that during COVID-19, during the lockdown, I had negative thoughts, you know, run through my mind because I'm not used to being at home alone and not interacting with other people. So my mental health was definitely affected. And I think right now, mental health or mental illness is at an all time high. And that's something we need to discuss because a lot of people are suffering. All right. So another question. Tell us uh, more about your um, realizations in this pandemic. A realization about this pandemic? Yes. Um, okay. I realized that there, there are things that we consider to be little that are not so little. Like I mentioned before, the simple act of giving a hug. You know, the fact that I couldn't hug my friends, I couldn't go out to coffee with them. These are things that were so minute, but they're so big. We we need that interaction. And COVID-19 has really taught me that you have to cherish every moment with the people that you love because tomorrow's not promised. Tomorrow's not promised. Okay, thank you so much for sharing. So we have our last questions. Question. Okay, what can you say about what can what would you say to someone that says pageantry degrades women? I would say go compete and you will see that these are quality women, women of the highest caliber. These are doctors, entrepreneurs, these are powerful women. Unless you compete yourself, you can't say that. 
get to learn the learn the girls their stories and their backgrounds because right now they're going based on just pictures images but if you really get to know these women you would know that these women are not degraded they are empowered and they're empowering others to chase out of their dreams all right thank you so much for sharing so we have also another last question from our viewers <laughs> before that of course we'll be reading uh, comments from our viewers from queen flora palen talaid i'm from philippines oh, oh, oh. We support our miss universe representative but now that i heard you i think i'm rooting also to you now oh thank you queen thank you so much thank you also you have hashtag already Supernova. Supernova. Yes. <laughs> thank you bruno <laughs> We have greetings from Karina Sahol Balida. Hello, Miss Canada. Yeah. Greetings from Philippines. The husband of my aunt is a Canadian. Oh, amazing. Oh, hi, Karina. All right. So here is our last questions from our viewers before we end our live session. So from Mega Brandy again. What is the saddest and happiest experience in your life? The happiest experience was definitely winning Miss Universe Canada. Um, I knew I wanted it and I knew that I was worthy and deserving of the title. But if I could be honest, I didn't think, I wasn't sure if the world was going to see me. And I'm just so happy that the world is finally seeing me and hearing me because we have not been heard or seen for a very long time. The saddest experience in my life is the fact that I'm unable to share this joy with my family. You know, as I mentioned before, my family and I have been separated for 22 years. I can't even call them and explain to them what's going on because they won't understand. I really wish that I could share this joy. This joy is part of my journey with them, but again, it's a different world so that they're not going to understand what it means to win Miss Universe Canada as a black woman. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. Miss Canada. So before we end our live interview today, mm -hmm. so do you have any message to your fans and supporters who are watching right now and also supporting you yes. all over the world uh, in this journey? I just want to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I definitely feel all, all of your love. It means a lot to me that I have people supporting me from all walks of life, different backgrounds, different countries. This is what I want. I just want the world to celebrate people based on their merit, not because they're a certain color or, you know, I just, yeah, I just, my heart is full of gratitude. It truly means a lot to me that I have the Philippines supporting me people from South Africa, Colombia. It's really humbling and it, it feels so surreal to me. And I just, I promise you all that no matter what I do, I'm going to do it with love. And I'm just going to always be myself. I will always be myself and I will do everything with love. And I encourage you all to do the same thing too. All right. Thank you so much. Hashtag raise your flag always. Yes. <laughs> okay. So do you have any uh, social media accounts to, so that, they can follow you or on your journey yes so my instagram is t-h-e and then n-o-v-a and then s-t-e-v-n-s -S. so the nova stevens okay thank you so much uh for thank having you. or spending your time with us uh since of course of course part of, no part of having a hectic schedule and so many interviews no thank problem. So I'm happy to anytime. Yeah. Thank you for your time as well. We're so happy to see you here. Thank you. So by the way, guys, if you haven't liked our like and follow our page, please do like it now and share this live mm -hmm. so that everyone will see um, Miss Universe Canada 2020. Uh, an empowered woman. <laughs> and thank you so much for tuning in. <laughs> is a phenomenal woman how do you say bye i'm sorry how do you say bye bye, bye. Paalam. Paalam? That's a good, okay. that's a good bye. Paalam. 
In Tagalog. Paalam? Yeah. Okay. Paalam. <laughs> and then, also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. So, we are also live right now. Okay. Okay. So, thank you so much, Miss Universe Canada, Nova Steven, for having with us and spending, of course, uh, despite, of ha despite of having a uh, hectic schedules from yours. So, we wish you good luck on your uh, Miss Universe journey. And uh, also, guys, please support Miss Universe Canada 2020. And uh, thank you so much. Like, like her um, Instagram account and also the Miss Universe Canada Facebook page if they have. They have, yeah. right? Yeah. How about, thank you so much. How about the uh, Facebook Twitter. account? Do you have? I do. It's um the Nova Stevens as well. Just I'm sorry, Nova Stevens is my Facebook. All right. So Nova Stevens, please uh like uh her Facebook account. Yeah. Thank you, Jay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much and have a nice day and have a nice eve there in Canada. Yeah. Have a good day. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>